Hello and welcome to Health Solutions with Sean and Janet Needham, where Team Needham discusses everything healthcare. I am your host, Sean Needham, along with my producer, Lindsay. And today we have the privilege of streaming live at Dr. Mark Vance's office in Meridian, Idaho. Beautiful Meridian, Idaho. We love Idaho. We love being here. Um, little backstory on Dr. Vance. Uh, we I started coming to southern Idaho a few months ago when we had the, all the lockdown in Washington State. So I started moving down into southern Idaho to um, just venture out. And since our pharmacy is licensed in Idaho, I, I, I came down to, to the Boise area. And I remember walking into Dr. Vance's office, and I didn't put two and two together until I started talking to his wife at the front desk and they said that they she said that oh well my husband used to practice in the Quincy area so I know the Moses Lake area and sure enough here we are Dr. Vance what a small world it is yeah it's um, amazing yeah it, it it is and and thank you for for um for letting us stream in your office today and you you've got a lot of unique treatment modalities that you do and you're going to even show one on me and I really appreciate that um so just tell us a little bit about your history Okay, so I'm uh, board certified family medicine and uh, graduated in 99. And, and uh, when I graduated medic, uh, residency, uh, I asked my cousin, he said, okay, I want you to find me a place that's a small town, not too big from a pretty big town. And uh, he came up with Quincy, Washington. Okay, mm -hmm. so this is a little town in the middle of nowhere, right in the center of the state, not that far from Moses Lake. And I practiced there for several years. And I uh, had a great time, was living the dream, doing everything, you know, clinic, emergency room, hospital, uh, nursing home. I was chief of staff of the hospital for about a third of the time I was there. Mm -hmm. Did everything. And then in 2012, my life changed because I had a patient who had a really bad knee and he needed a knee replacement, but he couldn't afford it. So uh, I heard from somebody else, uh, another friend of mine who'd said, oh, yeah, I had a bad knee and I went and got some injections with ozone in my knee by some crazy doctor in Pocatello, Idaho. And so um, we didn't really have a lot of uh, better solutions. So we said, hey, so the patient, I drove 11 hours each way to Pocatello, Idaho, and I saw him get some ozone injection in his knee. And I said, hey, I can do that because I'd done injections with other stuff before. So I took the class, and when I took the class on it, um, I found out, wait a second, if this is half as good as what he says, it's better than anything I've ever seen. And that kind of drug me down the rabbit hole. I went back to my clinic, tried to practice it in my clinic, and the clinic says, uh -uh, you're not going to do that. So on my day off, I rented a room at the nursing home locally there and started seeing some of my pain patients. We got rid of their pain, and they were the happiest people. Wow. And that kind of got me down, a, got well, this, down this route. Um, after I was in your office a few months ago when I first came to Meridian, uh, I just looked back at some of my notes, and I, and I realized, you know, I made some notes when you first came into my office, and you showed me your, your ozone uh, yeah, yeah, I was so was, excited. Yeah, right, and I remember that, and I had notes on it. It was just, it's, it's just, you know, um, just a small world, and, and yeah, I, it is. I, and I appreciate what you're doing because it's a very unique therapy, and you're helping patients um, that that can't be helped in a lot of other ways, especially if surgery is not an option or not a very viable option. So, yeah, um, tell us a little bit about the ozone therapy and some of the patients that you've helped with that therapy. Okay. So ozone is, um, it's a form of oxygen. O2 is the usual form of oxygen that's in the air and ozone is O3. So it's, an, we think of it as an activated form of oxygen. You don't want too much of it. It can cause some damage, but if you get the right amount, it can be very, very helpful, uh, in healing a lot of things and setting up things to be, um, to do really well. Uh, we treat all kinds of pain. This is one part of what we call our pain elimination protocol. The protocol that we use for the ozone is called prolozone. And the idea is you kind of put in a little bit, you find out where the pain is. Uh, let me just back up a little bit. The reason, each one of the pain treatments that we have um, is treating a different potential cause. So say you got pain, okay? So, and you say you got low back pain, for instance. The question is what causes the low back right. pain? And what would you say causes low back pain? Well, it could depend. It could be you have foot problems. Okay. Right. I'm cool with that. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I would not disagree with that. But if you ask me what causes low back pain, my answer would be it depends on who you talk to. Okay. So if you see an orthopedic surgeon, you're likely to get told you got a bulging disc. You see a pain specialist, they're likely to say you got an inflammation around the nerve root. The chiropractor will say the bones are out of alignment. Osteopath, oste the um, uh, acupuncturist will say there's a blockage in your chi. Physical therapist will say the muscles are too weak. And the massage right. therapist will say they're too tight. Okay. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> okay, so um, each one of those people, and looking at the exact same pain, is giving a cause for that pain that they have a treatment for. Okay, and right. this is the important thing. 
Now, with each, we, our pain elimination protocol includes five different treatments. Prolozone is one of them. And the cause that Prolozone is treating is saying, okay, if you got pain, then by definition, two things happened. Number one, at some point in the past, you injured yourself. And then number two, as or more importantly, it never healed. That's why it hurts, because it never healed. Right. And that's actually very different than what they taught me in medical school and afterwards. And so then the question is, if it didn't heal, why didn't it heal? And the answer we give with prolozone is we say it didn't heal because it didn't get enough blood supply. And so with prolozone, what we do is we say, okay, what's the most important ingredient that the blood brings? And that would be oxygen, right? right. And so we find the areas that are alway tender. We inject in. There's some numbing medicines, a bit of vitamins, homeopathic, anti-inflammatories, that kind of stuff. And then we put in the magic ingredient is oxygen. We just inject it right in there. It's mostly O2, but a small percentage is O3, which is the ozone, so it's prolozone. And we just put it in there, and it gets the ingredients and everything there so that it can actually finally heal, and then the pain's gone. So we're not numbing the pain. We're not masking. Well, we're it a little bit because we've got a numbing medicine just to kind of make it so the ozone doesn't hurt so bad. But we're not trying to mask it or anything like that. We're not trying to do whatever. We're just trying to say, let's get this sucker healed up. So it basically stimulates the body's own functions to heal itself. Yeah, so we're putting oxygen in there, and then the ozone actually has, um, it, it actually stimulates, uh, you know, stem cells and growth factors and all that kind of stuff, and it has like about 30 or 40 different things that it does, all of them good. So you specialize, that that's your part of your pain elimination program. Yep, that's one piece. Right, and what are some other pieces of that? Okay, so the next one that I learned, we'll go through these in order of how I learned them, okay? <laughs> the next one that I learned is called neural therapy. This was developed by the Germans back um, 100 years ago. Uh, Pro, uh, Procaine, which is the old Novocaine, was invented about 1905. Mm -hmm. And in the 1920s, um, there was two docs from Germany, um, Frederick and Walter uh, Hunicke was their name. And I'm probably butchering the pronunciation, but they're Germans. And they're a couple family practice docs. And what they did was they said, hey, if procaine numbs things up, maybe if somebody's got pain, we can inject them with a procaine and it'll help. So what they did was anybody with chronic pain, they'd inject it with some procaine, just some, you know, nowadays you could use procaine or lidocaine, but they'd inject the numbing medicine in there. And sure enough, it stopped the pain because it numbed it. But what they found was, and this was fascinating, the relief from the pain lasted longer than the anesthetic effect. And so if they did the injections, you know, several times in a row or whatever, then the patient would patients be pain-free totally. Here in this country, we just said, well, let's use morphine, okay? Right. And we know where that's taking us. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah chronic opioid yeah. use for sure. That's an issue. The next one is called uh, perineural injection technique. This is by Dr. John Lifkoff. He's from New Zealand. And uh, he, um, he he was doing some other therapy called prolotherapy where you actually inject um, pretty caustic kind of things to try and get inflammation in mm -hmm. an area. Um, he uh, had him, himself, he had a... Uh, uh, a tendon problem with his Achilles tendon. And so he tried doing that, but he says, wait a second. He'd done it on a ton of patients, but when he did it on himself, he's like, wait a second, that really hurts. <laughs> 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 and so he, he actually, instead of injecting into the tendon, he, he kind of injected, um, and he used lower and lower concentrations of just some sugar water. Mm -hmm. Okay, the kind is dextrose, is the kind of sugar that's in your blood. And he, he lower, lower concentrations, and instead of doing it into the tendons or anything, he just did it in the nerves around the area. So we call it perineural injection technique. And what the sugar does, nerves are like kids on Halloween, okay? So they love sugar, okay? That, that's, that's just, a, that's their favorite food, and they would eat it all day, every day, every day. And so what they do with the perineural injection technique is you find where the nerves are, not big, huge ones necessarily coming out of the spine, but ones just barely under the skin. You just inject, inject a little, just, just barely under the skin, a little tiny needle, but you inject a little bit of some low concentration sugar water in there and pain stops instantly, okay? It just stops it instantly. Those nerves are like, oh, oh I'm happy now, okay? And they're, and they're just, they're good to go. And so with that therapy, if you're just thinking that therapy alone, it doesn't matter if you've got a broken bone or anything, if you just can find those nerves, uh, that's, that's the, the way you look at it. So you're just thinking nerves. Right. Um, so that's that one. The next one we do, we call it perineal injection technique. This is um, from the work of a Dr. Stephen Kaufman in, Cal in Colorado. Um, but it's a man, he called it, um, something else, but it's a manual uh, technique in which you, this one's saying if you got pain, then it's the muscle. Say your muscle's too tight, you got a little muscle spasm. And even on a microscopic level, so it's not as not huge. But it, they say if you got pain, then it's muscles. And so what he did, he came up with a way that he could make muscles instantly relax, just on the spot. And so um, we use that, and we've used that for all kinds of things. So that's the neural, uh, that's the um, neural reflex therapy. The fifth one you, we use is, um, Pulse electromagnetic uh, field therapy, PEMF. 
And uh, that's, we just kind of, on all our patients, um, after the other treatments, we get them so they're pretty much pain-free, uh, whichever treatments we need to get them pain-free, and then we stick them on the PEMF to kind of help it stick. And what kind of um, results have you had? Do you have a, a testimony from a patient that you would like to share that where oh. they had some kind of chronic pain and, and they had no results any, anywhere else and you were able to help them? Well, it's interesting because I got so many. I, it's just like, how do we tell? So I'm, I just pulled up my, um, I got them on, on my YouTube channel. And so, I mean, we got uh, Holly knee pain. We got Jennifer with sacroiliac pain. We got uh, Jacqueline who had a motor vehicle accident. Um, shoulder pain, um, headaches, hip pain, um, head, neck pain, motor vehicle accident, uh, plantar fasciitis, knee pain, basically any place it hurts. Mm -hmm. Um, almost always, uh, we can, you figure each one of these treatments works about 70, 80% of the time when you start adding them all together. And this is where I think we've, um, really, uh, moved the ball forward in this because I don't, didn't invent any of these techniques, but putting them together can be extremely powerful. And we call, that's where we call it our pain elimination technique. And I don't know anybody else that's been putting them together in quite this way. Now, you've treated a lot of multiple sclerosis patients, is that correct? I've got a few, a few. And I don't claim to cure multiple sclerosis, yeah. but a lot of times with symptoms, we can make a big difference. Right. So you've um, treated some of their pain, is that correct? Yes, yeah. yes, and, and weakness. Uh, we, uh, last September, uh, here in uh, Meridian, they had a, it was the first ever, um, for the MS Fitness Challenge. Uh, the guy who started out was David Lyons. He's a very good friend and somewhat of a hero of mine. Um, but he, he was a bodybuilder and he got MS and he couldn't do anything. And he decided after trying all the drugs and not tolerating him or anything, he says, you know what? I'm just gonna, uh, I just gotta get back to the gym. So he had this goal to get back to the gym. And once he got back to the gym, he's like, you know what? I'm doing a lot better just from working out. So I wanna enter a bodybuilding competition. So we entered, yeah, wow, wow, wow. yeah. So we entered this bodybuilding competition, and he, <laughs> I heard, a, I, I heard him with an interview with somebody else. Uh, I didn't know this, but he entered this bodybuilding competition. Of course, he didn't win, but he, um, he actually won the most inspiring For participant. Sure. Absolutely. And he, had the, the award he got was actually a lot bigger than the winner's trophy. <laughs> 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 but after that, he came back. And he says, you know, and, and his wife is all, hey, you know, yeah, this is nice that you're doing it for yourself, but how about helping other people? So he started this charity, the MS Fitness Challenge, and he's going around helping people with uh, MS to be able to do more stuff. Right. So it may not fix the numbness, but if they can actually get out of their chair and walk or not have to use a cane or a walker or not be a slug all day every day, this is what he does. He does it through exercise. This is phenomenal. Yeah. And so with some of these people, so with David, um, and I can tell you the story. He, he did a video testimonial for me. He's happy to tell him. But um, we did some of the perineural injection technique on his arm. And right after the technique, he's like, wow, it feels great. And he picked up his cell phone with his left hand and walked out the room. And afterwards, he's like, wait a second. I never pick up my cell phone with the left hand because I don't, I'm always numb there. And I, and I think I'm going to, I always drop it. But it just felt totally normal. Oh, it was pretty dramatic. stunning. That yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 This kind of stuff. Yeah. And I mean, what a, you know, what you did to his quality of life is just, you know, yeah, that, that's really what it's all about is quality of life. Yeah. Know? And then, like I say, he's an amazing guy. We at the MS fitness challenge where they had this, this thing, we, we treated a few people afterwards. Um, one guy, um, I'm blanking on his name, Stephen, Stephen, I, I won't say his last name, but Stephen, um, he, uh, at the end of the day, pretty much every day, his, his right leg just gives out on him. And so, you know, we were doing good all day long, but towards the end of the day, he just couldn't walk. And he said, here, let me try something. We did some of the sugar water injections on his leg, and he's suddenly running completely normally. It limps completely gone and, and everything. He was just totally stunned. And it's funny because I saw him the next day, and he's like, I still can't believe what happened. I'm still feeling fantastic, but I cannot believe what happened. <laughs> Now, you, other than pain, you, you, you treat other chronic illnesses also, correct? Right. Can, right. can you talk about a little some of those? Okay, so uh, as far as illnesses, yeah, we do a lot of treatment for allergies um, and uh, autoimmune disorders. Um, you're a big fan, I know, of low-dose naltrexone, mm -hmm. yep. and we use a lot of low-dose naltrexone, um, a lot of low-dose naltrexone. And I don't know that it's always a home run, but oftentimes it gets us at least a base. Yeah. And yeah. for a lot of people, that's huge. Yeah. Absolutely huge. Um, we also do a lot of low-dose allergy and low-dose immunotherapy, and um, it's a little bit similar in some ways, although the history is very different, but a little bit similar in some ways to homeopathy. And um, so we treat things like, you know, food allergies, um, inhaled allergies, chemical sensitivities, um, and using that kind of therapy, we can also even do things like treat Lyme disease or um, uh, 
parts of like, like mold sensitivities and some of these other things. I had a patient with mold sensitivity every time, and they had a job. They go to people's homes, and there's some homes they just couldn't go to because they just you know get really really sick. Right. We did this treatment on them, and, and they, 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 I think right now they're living in a house full of mold. Actually, <laughs> 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 they're doing just amazingly well. <laughs> yeah, and and um, we do bioidentical hormones. I know you're a big fan of those, yeah. and um, for this uh, actually interesting it was for the, this particular patient, you know, they, um, an elder, elderly lady, and you know, next thing you know, she's getting married and moving, you know, moving cross country and, and just having a great time. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's great. And, and part of that, uh, hormone therapy is thyroid too. You specialize. Oh, absolutely. So thyroid, we, we do a lot with thyroid and one of the things we we do, uh, the usual treatments, well, usual alternative treatments, um, (laughs) exactly the usual treatments (laughs) in my estimation. Um, I I hate to say it, uh, but what I was taught in medical school was wrong. Um, but, uh, the usual treatments for thyroid, unfortunately on the long term, make things worse, but, um, but the usual treatments in alternative medicine, usually people give um, uh, like armor thyroid or uh, porcine, like a nature thyroid or NP thyroid. Mm-hmm. And basically it's kind of a mixture between the T4, which is like the inactive form of thyroid medicine, and the T3, which is the active form. It's kind of like if your car runs on kerosene and gasoline, but it runs a whole lot better on the gas than the kerosene. Right. <laughs> so they kind of give a mixture of this. It's usually yeah. a kind of fixed mixture, and you can kind of split it up and do, do them a little more um, the other way. The other thing that we do a lot of with thyroid is actually using uh, Dr. Dennis Wilson's protocols. Um, and he, he has what he calls the Wilson's temperature syndrome. And this is really groundbreaking. I, I don't know if you, how much have you done with, with A little bit. I'm familiar with it a little bit. So the concept is if you got, and, and, and Dr. Wilson found this with, with talking with his patients and doing study on this, but he found that, you know, if somebody's got, in order to join the club for Wilson's temperature syndrome, he made up this diagnosis, okay? But in order to join the club for this, you need three things. Number one, you need to have a temperature that on average is less than 98.6. Now, that's probably most people around yeah. these days. Yeah. And in fact, they say the average temperature has dropped to like 97 point whatever just in the last century. Okay, so low temperature. Number two, you need to have normal thyroid labs. And this is normal as defined by what normal docs would think was normal. Okay, so it's a pretty broad definition of normal. Right. Uh, number three, you need to have any symptoms, doesn't matter what it is. Okay. You know, hair loss, uh, chronic decreased sinuses, energy. Uh, decreased energy, constipation, yeah. dry skin, whatever it yeah, is. Right. And they don't even have to necessarily, necessarily have to be officially thyroid symptoms. It could be like, you know, period problems or whatever. Yeah. And so what he found was if he could bring people's temperatures up to normal or even close to normal, about 80% of those symptoms disappeared. Now, that's pretty good batting averages. So we get these people coming all the time with massive symptoms. I mean, you've got this laundry list of stuff, and, and they're like, wow, we got 20 diagnoses. What, where the heck do we start? And in those kind of cases, this is a great way to start because if we can knock out 80% or even, you know, 60 70% of their symptoms, then we can take pot shots of the other stuff and kind of whittle away on the rest of the stuff. Right. And he starts with basically T3 therapy and titrates that, correct? Precisely. So it's, it's yes, um, that's partially true. Okay. So what he does is he starts with um, T3, which is like the gasoline in your car as opposed to the kerosene. Um, So he starts with a T3, he does that, and um, he goes up very quickly, every single day on the dose. You go up on the dose, and then you get to a a top dose, and then you come down every couple, three days. So you go up and then down, and you you repeat this a few times, you know, uh, wash, rinse, repeat type thing. And then you do this a few times, and over time, it resets your thermostat. Yeah. So that your temperature is more normal on its own and you're feeling a ton better on its own. So the idea is to make it so you don't have to stay on it long term. Occasionally people do, but um, a lot of people can get off it and they do great. Um, I discuss thyroid a lot in my practice and I, I, I do uh, presentations on it a lot too. And I love your kerosene gasoline analogy. And I'm hoping it's okay if I use that in the future. Yes, you I have full that. permission to do that. I love that. When you remember, I don't mind you giving me credit for it, but that's fine. You can go ahead and use it all you want. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I appreciate your uh, education. Actually, actually, that. just so you know, the, the, the analogy goes a little bit further. So here's how it goes. So you got a car, it runs on two fuels, it can do kerosene or gasoline, but if it does the kerosene, it can only go 5, 10 miles an hour. If it does the gas, it can go 90 miles an hour, no problem. Okay? Right. So here's the deal. The T3 is like the gasoline. That's the good stuff. The T4 is like the kerosene. Now, your body can turn the T4 into the T3, so it can make the gasoline from the kerosene, but a lot of times when you actually check the labs, it doesn't really do that as much. Right. What it does do is it turns the kerosene or the T4 into reverse T3, mm-hmm. which is like water in your gas tank. Yeah, that's true. And 
Not only that, but when your brain is checking the levels of these things, it can't tell the difference between the T3 and the reverse T3. So there's a bunch of reverse T3. Your brain says, hey, you got plenty of thyroid. I'm not giving you anymore. Shut up and don't hit your sister anymore. Okay? <laughs> That's what's going on. And yeah. so um, and so when I took when I checked thyroid levels, I always check, you know, everybody does CSH. But that one to me is the least important. The more important ones are the free T4, free T3, and then the reverse T3. And that one gives us a clue what's going on very, very often. That's the one everybody misses. And so very, very often people say, wow, my lab's normal, but they got this reverse T3 that's through the roof. And no wonder they feel like ter they feel right. crappy. Sorry, right. but that's how it is. And so if they have a high reverse T3, then um, you treat them with a little bit of T3 and then you do some other things nutritionally to help help them try to produce T3 instead of reverse T3? Right. So with the T so what happens is the reverse T3 is made from the T4. Okay. And this is where Dr. Wilson figured this out. So what you do is you give enough T3 to make it so your brain says, hey, I don't need to make any more thyroid medicine. So it quits making the T4 and that that reverse T3 slowly gets whittled away. And then you slowly withdraw the T3 and you kind of reset the whole thing. This is the whole point, the Wilson's right. protocol. And if I remember right, correct me if I'm wrong, um, reverse T3 is the mammalian hibernation um, that's that's thyroid, one correct? that's one theory about yeah, it. Yeah, and so that's the why it makes us tired if we have a lot of reverse T three. Well, yeah, and you're, you're really sluggish. So the question is, what brings all this on? Okay, and so they did studies um, on people whose ancestors, you know, suffered significant starvation, for instance. And these people whose ancestors su suffered significant starvation, they tend to have a lot higher reverse T three levels. The theory is, if you're in an area where there's not enough food, there's not enough resources around, do you want your car running on gas or kerosene? You know, do you want your car, do you, when you come to the stoplight, do you want to have your car engine running the whole time or do you want to turn it off? Right, yeah. You know, you, and when, do you want your idle going, or do you want your idle going chug, 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 you chug, conserve. just about stopped? Yeah, you yeah. want to conserve as much fuel as yeah. possible. And that's what the reverse T3 is all about. It's about conserving fuel. The problem is, in our society today, we don't suffer starvation so much, thank goodness. But what we do suffer is stress. And stress will also get this thing going. And so it's usually the major stressors. The people who have the biggest problem, um, are people who suffer significant stresses. And, and this is the classic story. It happens all the time. Yeah. Everything's going fine, major stressor, boom, they crash and burn. And then yeah. they may last for like a couple, three months, but they get back most of the way, but not as far. And then a few years later, another major stressor, boom, they crash more, lasts longer. And after a while, they're out for the count. And so what you need to do is, and, and each time that reverse T3 goes up and up and up and up. And would a poor diet and sedentary lifestyle of course also, right of course I would, I would imagine you know since it's uh our body wants to go into idle mode like you're talking about in those situations so. but a lot of these people have been on every single healthy diet it's funny you know um and you may disagree with this but in my experience um if i see people who are, who are on this amazing impeccable diet they're the sickest patients i have not that that diet makes you sick they're very healthy diets that's fantastic for you but only a really sick person would be motivated to be on that kind of a diet. It's interesting because <laughs> on our drive here uh, to your office, we were um, talking about that. Is that? Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Is that you know if um, you know if you're a woman and you have four percent body fat and you're on an impeccable diet, that doesn't necessarily make you healthy. In fact, no, you're, you're probably really you're, sick. You're not healthy. I mean, yeah. you're just not. But the, but the reason why, I don't think it was the diet that did it. It was that they were sick from something else first, and that's why they got in the diet in the first place. Right, right. That there's probably some truth to that. So before the show, you were doing, kind of testing my shoulder a little bit. Oh, yeah, 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 some, yeah, 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 yeah. You're trying to find some pain Yeah, you're points. sitting there saying, oh, please, sir. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And you, you do some manual therapy? This is, is the manual therapy. We call it the perineural injection technique. And that's it's a manual the five that you do? Yeah, it's the okay. one that, that tells muscles to relax. Okay. Okay. You want to so, you want you want to try this? Yeah. Let's. Okay. Go, let's so I want you to just turn just a little bit this uh, this okay. way. Okay. So yeah, I, you said before you were tender right about here. Yeah. Right. Oh yeah. Right there. That's sort. Okay. Let me tell you. Is it still tender? No. But what'd you do? <laughs> <laughs> you didn't do anything, did you? I'm poking harder than I did I before. Know. Like, it's gone. <laughs> it's gone. Okay. Amazing. I'm yeah. serious. I yeah, 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 yeah. No, this is great, incredible stuff. Okay, find another okay, spot. Okay, find another spot. Okay, uh, let's see over right here. There, right, right there. Right there. Okay, just a second. Is it better now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm assuming. <laughs> I'm assuming these results are temporary for now. Correct. Well, they. I mean, if you repeat it a few times, it stays more permanent. But there's some places. I mean, the first place, a lot of people attend there, so I, it was a bit of a no-brainer for me to find it. But um, yeah. And it's just a process of finding that and then doing some kind of manual thing. Okay, so, so this muscle here, this is called the infraspinatus. It's over your scapula, your wing bone, or chicken okay. bone. That's tender there. Uh, that's tender right there. It's a common... Is, it, is that better now? Yep, yep. 
gone. Definitely. Yeah. So that's a common place for people to be sore, probably, I'm guessing. Well, yes and no. So um, for this particular one here, the, 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 the infraspace, again, it's over your scapula or the, your wing bone, if you will. Um, this particular muscle is sore for people. There's two major groups, people with lung problems. So people with like, uh, you know, smokers or asthmatics or that kind of stuff, COPD, they're very commonly tender here. But the other group of people who are tender here are people with anxiety. People are stressed up tight or whatever. And so we have this treatment. Um, we actually came up with this. It's a mixture of a few different therapies. And, um, but we, we, this muscle here, the infraspinatus, there's a, a Dr. Um, Philippot uh, down, I think it, was, it wasn't Georgia, but it was one of those places down there, right there too. Is that better? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is. It really so, is. So, um, but what he did was he discovered that um, all of his asthmatics were sore in this muscle here. So what he did was he injected the muscle with lidocaine and suddenly their asthma got better. So he would do, you know, people come back every couple, three weeks or whatever, get an injection in here with lidocaine, and after about four or five times, they're off all their asthma medicines. I mean, it's stunning stuff. That's dramatic. And so we came up with what we call our breathing protocol where we do that. We, we turn off this pain here with injections, and then also on the front of the chest. So, like, if you're tender, are you tender right uh, there? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. is it better now? Yeah, so, okay. So explain our listeners it's, it's and gone. viewers. It's gone. Okay, so you, you touch something over here. So is there a nerve that goes over there? Explain. explain okay, so can, I don't know that. explain what you're doing? Uh, actually, I can't necessarily explain it. But the concept is uh, you find a place that's tender. Say right there. Right there. Okay, is it better now? Yes. <laughs> okay. And so what you do is you find a place that's tender, and then you find another place that you, you touch the other place, and it turns the tender post point off. Now, with our pain elimination protocol, we do what Dr. Philippot did. We numb up this shoulder, this shoulder blade thing with, um, with the numbing medicine. And then we find, and this is where we kind of um, pioneered this, you find all the tender areas on the front of the chest. We turn those off manually, like I just turned those mm -hmm. couple off, and you're like, whoa, what happened? And then um, what we do is we call our tickle therapy. We take some lidocaine in a syringe with a needle and not poke through the skin, but lightly touch the outside of the skin with the lidocaine over the whole chest, front and back, and then um, people usually, almost always, they'll say afterwards, wow, I haven't breathed this good in years. Seriously, years. And that's number one, that's what they do. So, you know, you're asthmatic. So um, if I'm working in the ER and a patient comes with an asthma attack, we'll give them the nebulizer and stuff. They're 20, 30% better. We do this and they're 95% better. Okay. Wow. wow. And so um, the other thing that it does, though, is doing that protocol, that breathing protocol, that totally relaxes people okay they're like totally chilled out and so i had a patient come in the ER one time middle of a panic attack we gave them the usual medicines you know they're like 20 30 percent better i did this breathing protocol and the end of this protocol i'm going and literally poking, not through the skin but like poking the, the whole front of the chest with a needle with a lidocaine in it and she's sitting there she says wow i feel like i'm in a spa wow now that's pretty good for a panic attack yeah yeah pretty good for a panic attack so um, we kind of took a few therapies, kind of put them together, and, and that's one that we kind of um, pioneered. So I, I, every patient's different. So, yes, absolutely. You know, um, what, what would it, how many times does a patient usually, on average, have to come back to go when they go through those five steps? How many times do they, do they have to come back to? Oh, for the pain right elimination patient? protocol? Yeah. So we tell people, you know, we recommend a series of five treatments. And each one, we do as many of them. We don't necessarily do all of them each time, but we do as many as we need to to get, make them so there's hopefully 100% better or like tons better after each visit. And, you know, some of it's going to return somewhat. But usually after five, people are significantly better, if not all better. Now, if they're, if they're no better at all, we say, okay, it's just not working. Try something else. Yeah. But um, that doesn't happen very often. We're not 95% making a huge difference. Wow. Give that's, that's now, I'm kind of making these numbers up. I haven't stepped yeah, down yeah, that yeah, chart with sure. but, but that's my gestalt. I mean, occasionally we get one, but... Um, not very often. Yeah, that's really cool. I love what you're doing. Obviously, you're really knowledgeable about it. You're very passionate about it, and I appreciate you sharing. Oh, have to. So for our listeners and viewers, um, how do people find you, and what is what would you like to say in the last um, minute segment of our show? Well, okay. Uh, first off, um, pro probably just say, you know, we our tagline is uh, specializing in hard-to-treat pain and illness. That's what we're all about. Um, we're located in Meridian, Idaho. Our website's uh, advancedmedical.com. And um, you just go with the, the emails info at advancedmedical.com. And, uh, you know, I, I can give you the phone number, I guess. Uh, yeah, go ahead. 208-258-7558. And you just go ahead and give us a call. Um, and, yeah, we'd be happy to see you. I, we, we can't fix everybody. I don't make any of that claim. But I will tell people on my very first visit, 
my goal, and we don't do it all always, but we do it more than you'd think. My goal is to make it so that people completely run out of things to complain about. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. And then after that, we get, once we get there, and we just had two yesterday that they said, hey, yeah, I got nothing. Okay. So yesterday was a pretty good day. Um, but uh, once we get there, then the goal is to say, okay, now how do we make sure that you stay without right. things? And that's where the, a lot of the hormones and things come in to try and help prevent problems right. in the future. Right. So well, I thank you for your expertise. Thank, thank you, you for letting us stream in your office. I really, really appreciate it. And you've been listening to Health Solutions with Sean and Janet Needham, where Team Needham discusses everything healthcare. As always, you will find us on our midweek podcast anytime from a Wednesday to a Thursday, depending on our guest schedule. And on every Monday, 1 to 2 p.m., you can um, watch us on Facebook and on YouTube, streaming live. Um, also, all the podcast forums, so SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play, um, be watching for them. Um, go to those forums. Go our YouTube channel. Like our YouTube channel so you don't miss any of these live streams. Uh, and uh, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching Health Solutions with Sean and Janet Needham. Thank you.